Welcome to CivilNet. Our guest today is Barlow Dermagardichan from Fresno, California. Uh, welcome to CivilNet. Thank, Thank you for taking the time to come and see us today. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our viewers, if I may. You are the Berberian Coordinator of the Armenian Studies Program at California State University, Fresno. Um, and, you know, we were just doing a quick recap of all the, the programs that you have. You have a newspaper, a radio hour, you have Armenian Students Organization, you provide scholarships, you have a lecture series, exchange program, a very vibrant, active program at California State. Um, but before we talk more about that, I want to also talk about why you're in Armenia and about a new book that's been published, right, that's yeah. called um, David of Sassoon, Critical Studies on the Armenian Epic. So we have so many things to yes, talk about. Yes, we do. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me, though. It's, uh, it's really great to be here in Armenia and to be with you. Thank you for coming. Uh, you're also here in Armenia um, to take part in the 70th anniversary of the National Academy of Arts and Sciences, uh, a, a very important milestone uh, in Armenia. And also you are here with colleagues and academicians and scholars from all over the world taking part in that symposium or the celebrations. Um, but first, I'd really like to talk about David of Sasson. Okay. Uh, you and Dr. Dikran Kuyumjan edited this book that was published by the CSU Fresno Press, yes? Um, why is this book important right now? Well, it's exciting for uh, several reasons. Uh, the study of David of Sasson has been going on for uh, many years, and actually it was an oral epic until the 19th century. So what's interesting is that the, uh, the book is about a, an, an epic uh, version of the epic which was actually found in Fresno. There was a woman in Fresno who was a Vanetzi and she knew the epic by heart and it's been, it's the, caused a conference to be organized around that event. So the book is an outgrowth of that conference which took place actually quite a bit ago but we have uh, great scholars who have contributed to, to the book. Well, again, just for our viewers, it's an epic poem uh, that is now included in UNESCO's um, heritage list of intangible heritage, uh, sorry. Um, it dates back to the 8th century, if I'm not mistaken, and as you said, in the 19th century, a bishop of the Armenian Apostolic Church decided to finally put it down on paper because it had been uh, transferred, you know, for every generation orally. Um, it's interesting to me, David of Sassoon or Daredevils of Sassoon, the, the actual epic poem, um, could it be on par with other epic poems like Beowulf or Dante's Divine Comedy, things that we learned in school and in university as part of world literature, world heritage. Is this Armenian epic poem of that caliber, in your Absolutely. opinion? Absolutely. Uh, the Armenians should be proud of their epic um, heritage and their epic tradition. What's fascinating about this epic is that it was only oral for over a thousand years and that it wasn't even reflected in Armenian literature. So the official Armenian literature, usually of the church and then later of, uh, you know, people writing, they never even mentioned uh, David of Sassoon. And so we have this rich cultural legacy and the variants, the, the places that it was told, all give a, a story, an epic, which really reflects Armenian culture, who we are. We, we learn who we are through this epic. We tell, we tell our stories through epics, and that tells us who we are as a people. And there's so much to yet study in that epic. It's amazing to me, uh, knowing our, our own literary history and our um, attitudes towards the written word, towards education and books, that uh, it was only in the 1800s that it was finally um, uh, put on paper. Now this book um, that, as you said, includes a who's who of, of Armenian uh, scholars who wrote essays and uh, uh, did studies around it. Will this book now be able to be used within Armenian studies programs at Fresno, uh, CSU Fresno and other universities as well? Or, would, or, or should it be part of other programs? Well, I think it, it will be part of the study of David of Sassoon and the epic study in general. And the reason is because it's in English, number one, so that bring, brings it to a wider audience. Uh, we, we look at, in the book, uh, there are scholars who look at the metrics, the, the, the kind of uh, way the meter is as a poem. There's people that talk about uh, the, the characters, where it, they developed. 
Uh, there's people that talk about it in Armenian literature. So what I'm saying is that this will be of interest to anyone interested in epics, of course specifically with the, the David of Sassoon, but I think it will actually cause more questions to be asked, which makes it something that could be a dissertation, it could be something that will bring it, uh, I think, greater attention. Well, that's fantastic. And when your luggage arrives from Moscow, right. you will give us a copy, hopefully, of the book, or yes. we can get our hands and, and actually, I want to mention that the book is actually published as part of the Armenian Studies Program uh, series called the Armenian Series, which is part of the press at Fresno State. So we've actually started our own publishing uh, house, you can call it. This is the fourth title in that series. Our next one will be about William Soroyan which of course I think will be of great interest all over the world. It will be a collection of essays and, and uh, conferences, proceedings uh, about William Soroyan. So we're very excited that we have this Armenian series to add to all the well, others. Well, I'm sure you, even more for you as a Soroyan, as a native son of Fresno. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And yeah. also with Armenia too, yeah, because absolutely. he loved Armenia. Of course, yeah, of course. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Armenian Studies program. Uh, we have several in the United States, uh, in different universities. Uh, when was uh, your program established at Fresno? Well, it's very interesting because just a few years ago, uh, we were celebrating the 35th anniversary of our program as it is today, and we were doing research, and we found out that actually in 1960, Richard Hovanisian was giving extension courses at Fresno State in Armenian Studies uh, beginning in 1960-61. And then Louise Nalbandian came, uh, was teaching Armenian history there in the 1960s and 70s, and Ara Avakian and, and several other people. So we've had a form of the program in existence since the 1960s, which makes it one of the oldest in the United States. And then in, in 1976 uh, and 77, Dikran Kyumjin came from Paris and really established the, the program in the format that we know it today. And I was one of his students. I went on to UCLA, I got my graduate degree in Armenian Studies and came back in 1985. So you've come full circle. <laughs> to me it was just a, a love of, uh, of Armenian Studies and then to be teaching back in the place where I was born and my family was at it was just the perfect place and next year will be my 30th year of teaching at Fresno State so it's to me... Uh, Obviously it's a, it's a, it's, you have a love for, for the profession that you've chosen. Right. Um, how many students are there today at the program? Well, we have actually 22,000 students at Fresno State, of which we estimate some five to 600 are of Armenian origins. That much? Yeah, and that's usually just by looking at the last names. So if you think about all mixed of the marriages, mixed marriages sure. and people that may have only one eighth or one sixteenth Armenian, it's probably more than that. Um, so we have lots of students who take our courses. Uh, we have an Armenian studies minor, it's not a major, okay. but they have to take six to eight courses to get that minor and they take uh, they can take a language course so we have a full range of Armenian language we have arts of Armenia uh, on on the arts architecture and painting we have a history course we have uh, an, a culture course and then we have Armenian literature as well so we have a, the full spectrum of courses on Armenians and do non-Armenian students uh, also take courses there it's so fascinating that many of my classes uh, have uh, a very mixed uh, population of students reflecting the, the student body at Fresno State. So I have Mexican-Americans, I have Hmong students, I have Asian students, I have black students, uh, Armenian students of course, right. but I'm saying that it's, it's, it's of interest to the broader community and it really has found its way into the curriculum and so students take it from a, a broad, broad background. It's very interesting. Today, uh, how important are um, programs like yours uh, or chairs of Armenian studies in different universities, how important is that today uh, in North America to have these kinds of uh, studies in place in some of the best universities? Well, I think, I think what's on everyone's mind even here in Armenia is the question of what happens in the future to Armenians. And so in America, it's the question of assimilation, identity, who we are as Armenians. And if you get to be 15, 16, 17 years old and you're going to go to college, that's the time when you're the most interested in finding out about who you are. And so places that teach Armenian courses and Armenian studies give those students an opportunity to delve into their own history. Perhaps they'll get excited, perhaps they'll go on and do something years later that they wouldn't have done except for that experience that they had at, at, a, at a university. In addition to that, it helps to prepare those few people who are going to uh, choose it as a career, as a, as a profession, to be in Armenian studies, which is so fulfilling. 
uh, on so many levels, uh, you know, working with young people to teach them about who they are and, and just uh, about the background, it's, it's, it's fascinating work. So it's, to me, it's an important piece of the whole puzzle that we have that is the diaspora. Uh, you know, we have to have Armenian studies because if we don't have that, then, then it'll be left to everyone else to teach who we are. That's right. And these questions of identity, these narratives that are slowly dying out that we're not um, uh, capitalizing on the, the potential of the diaspora, I think it's, it's, it is a very critical and important part of, of, of what you're doing. Um, and it's interesting to me, we were speaking earlier that you're a second, third generation American Armenian, and yet you speak Armenian fluently. You have this great love uh, for your heritage and your people, where does that come from? How does somebody like Barlo Dermagardician find that uh, sense of identity of Armenianness that then sort of becomes a catalyst for the rest of your life for what you do? Yeah, well, I think it's something I've been thought about a lot. It's clear it comes first from family. So the first thing is the family. The parents have to transmit to you that uh, love of the culture and just, you know, the everyday part of being an Armenian. So I don't think I ever had any other concept of who I was as being an Armenian, but yet perfectly American in, in, in every in way. In every way, yeah, sure. I think I had the advantage of also having grandparents alive that I knew that were uh, survivors of the genocide. So I had a material feeling. I, I knew people that had lived in Armenia. Right. So that was something that was very special. And then it's just a matter, the church was also important to me, very important to our family. So to me, the church was the way I first came to Armenia in 1978. And I think that actually, if I look back, it was from 1978 that I really began to express my interest in Armenian studies after a visit from one month here in Armenia. So you'll be presenting a paper on Saturday here in Yerevan. Um, what is the paper? Well, the, the paper is going to be on uh, the theme of the Armenian Genocide in the writings of 20th century Armenian American writers. So this is the th what I call the third and fourth generation of American authors, Armenian by background, but who express themselves in English. But the, the themes of the novels or books that they have written is, uh, incorporates the Armenian Genocide. Uh, actually, this is part of the, the three-day international conference on Armenian studies in, in conjunction with the anniversary of the Academy of Sciences. For me, that's kind of the area that I've been looking at. So, And just uh, to close up again uh, about the book, David of Sassoon, Critical Studies on the Armenian Epic, where can we find the book and how can we order it? Well, it's, it's very easy. You can actually go to Amazon, and uh, Amazon has, has the book. And then also you can go to the Armenian Studies Program at Fresno State. Just search for that Armenian Studies Program. You'll find it, and on our website shows you the, the book and where you can uh, buy it. Okay, very well. Thank, thank you, you once again. Uh, thank you for watching CivilNet. Our guest was Barlo Dermagardician. Mm -hmm.